What's going on guys, my name is Theo at Tricks and today I'm going to be showing you guys four very easy bosses that you can easily master with a little bit of practice. Once you get the basic strategy down, you can make millions per hour, up to 3 mil to 4 mil per hour with some of these. So throughout this video, I'll tell you the requirements, the required gear, as well as the strategy to kill the bosses. I'm going to do a few kills on each of them in some low level gear to show you that it is possible to do these bosses without much money. If you learn anything or find this video interesting, be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you're new around here. So the first boss of this video is Dagonoth Rex. And in order to kill Dagonoth Rex, I recommend having at least 70 in all of the combat stats, which is pretty low for a boss monster. You get Dagonoths as a slayer task very commonly, and if you have one as a slayer task, you can make a heap of profit by doing the whole thing at the Dagonoth Rex. You can use the slayer helmet if you're on a slayer task, but at the moment, the full Guthans setup is only about 3 mil, so this makes it a real Really, really good setup to use at Dagonoth Rex right now for low levels, and it's a lot cheaper than other setups that use the Serpentine Helm or the Verax Helm or the Plate Skirt. And for those that don't know, Rex has a magic level of zero, which means you can wear any armor with any magic bonus and still be able to hit him the same as if you wore magic gear. The best weapon to use at Rex is a Trident, and if you don't have a lot of money, you can buy an uncharged Trident on the GE for like 50k and then charge it with two to 300 charges just for one trip at Rex. The two things you need to focus on a magic damage boost, so the occult necklace, and prayer bonus is very important at Rex as well, especially if you have a low defense level. In your inventory, you do need rune thrown axes if you're going on your own. That's the only way to get into the Dagonoth Kings, and as well, if you're on your own, you'll need a pet rock and you can drop that on the gates as you're trying to go in, and it'll work as if someone else is standing there. I brought a lot of prayer potions, and that's for players that have a very low defense level. You'll see soon when I go to kill Rex that I don't even need to use prayer there, and that's since my defense and magic level are very close to 99, but for those people that have around 70 in those stats, it is recommended to pray magic while you're killing Rex. Navigating through the Waterbirth Isle dungeon isn't too difficult, but you just gotta make sure you get your prayer switches right as you go through. Once you get all the way to the bottom, there's a route that you can jump over to peek into the Dagonoth cave in a safe area. That's really helpful for world hopping and if you need to find an empty world. The hardest part about Dagonoth Rex is getting into the dungeon. A strategy that I use is I like to kind of spam click on the ladder so I can peek in there really quickly to see where all the Dagonoth kings are and then pop right back up without taking any damage from any of the kings. As you're entering, you should have protect from magic on. What you need when you go in is to be unaggressive to both Supreme and Dagonoth Prime. There's a good chance that they'll attack you a few times, but then eventually they'll walk to the other side of the room, and that allows you to hug the wall and run south, hugging the coastline all the way to the eastern side of the room. If you hug the eastern coastline, the other Dagonoths will not attack you. The only one that's in reach is Rex. It's a good idea to use long range on your trident, and what you have to do is attack Rex, run over to the coastline all the way to the east, and wait till Rex comes a little bit closer, and then run directly south. You should put on protect from me if it's your first few times doing this because there's a good chance that he'll hit you but once you get better and better you'll be able to lure him into the safe spot so easily the fight is very simple you won't take any damage except from the things around the outside on the coastline and then once you finish your kill you can switch over to your Guthans war spear to heal up on the guys attacking you and that basically means you don't need any food with you for the rest of the trip as you can see with me not using prayer I'm literally not taking damage and I'm not using any prayer points so this means I can stay here pretty much endlessly as long as I have enough antidote potions, and it makes it really handy for Dagonoth Slayer task because there's not much banking involved and you can just camp here. You can use Blood Barrage to heal up if you don't want to bring Guthans, but that has a higher requirement and is more expensive to use than Guthans. Rex drops the Berserker Ring at a rate of 1 in 128, which is a really good drop rate for a 3 mil drop. He also drops the Warrior Ring at the same drop rate, but that one's only 80k. Depending on how many kills you get an hour, you can get approximately 700k to over 1 mil per hour killing Dagnoth Rex. The spawn time is a little bit long for Rex, so you can't get a huge amount of kills for Rex, but 30 kills is still doable in an hour. And you also have a pretty good chance of getting a clue scroll, 1 in 42 for a hard clue, 1 in 750 for an elite and 1 in 5000 drop for the pet Dagonoth Rex.
The next boss is Vetion, and Vetion is arguably one of the most powerful wilderness bosses there are. In order to be able to kill him, you need at least 43 prayer for protect from melee, and at least 70 in the combat stats for Verax. A salve amulet from the Haunted Mine quest really helps against Vetion, and since he's weak to crush, you can also bring a mythical cape. I've shown in the past a safe spot for Vetion, where you can lure him out of his walking distance and just attack him normally until he dies without taking any damage. Well, in this video, I wanted to show you a second method to kill Vetion, which is still a very, very good method, and you'll actually take less damage than doing the safe spot method. Before I go further, don't take your fire cape or dragon defender into the wilderness, because this is above level 30, and if you die, there's a good chance that you might lose it. Vetion has a 1 in 512 drop of the Ring of the Gods, which is 11 mil right now, and a 1 in 171 drop rate for the dragon pick, which has gone up to 5 mil recently. Along with that, Vetion's other drops are almost all over 100k. He actually drops 100 grimy ranars, which is 800k in just one single drop. So this is how the safe spot works. Near the lava dragons, there's some trees, and if you lure Vertion over to the trees, you're able to really easily flinch him, very similar to the Chaos Ellie. All you have to do is attack him, run back to the safe spot very quickly, and wait until his health bar disappears, and then repeat. Your Verax can hit right through his defense level, making kills a lot faster than they normally would. You can use a God Sword at Vetion as well, but you'll be far less accurate since he has a huge defense level. Once he hits half of his health, he'll spawn in two Hellhounds. At this safe spot specifically, only one of the Hellhounds will become aggressive to you. The other one will be wandering around a bit further away. So when that happens, you should put on Protect from Melee, and then run out, attack the other dog, and run straight back to the safe spot. Keep your protect from melee on because these dogs can hit pretty high and you have to kill both of the dogs before you can go back to killing Vertion. You won't be able to deal any damage to him without those dogs being dead. Once you finish off the purple form of Vertion, he'll turn into the orange form of Vertion. And I think this one's a little bit higher level, but it's exactly the same concept. Keep flicking him, watching his health bar all the way until he has half health and then the dogs will spawn again, lure them back with protect from melee on and then finish off your Vertion kill. Vetion has a 1 in 100 chance to drop an elite clue, which is way better than Dagonoth Rex, and a 1 in 2000 drop rate of the pet, which is very low for a pet drop rate. Each kill takes approximately 5 minutes for me, but since almost each elute is over 100k, you can very, very easily make over 1 mil per hour killing Vetion. The next boss or bosses that I'm showing is the Barrows Brothers, and I wanted to show you guys doing a full Barrows run with just a Salamander. You can literally do Barrows with about 10 Okay. Black Salamanders are dirt cheap, and Harolander Tar is worth nothing. Doing the Mauritania Diary, the Hard or Elite Diary, gives you teleports near Barrows, and is actually the most efficient way to do your Barrows trips, but I would recommend buying the Barrows Teleport Tablets off the Grand Exchange. They're about 3k each, and anyone can use them. You'll need to bring a spade with you as well, and you definitely need some prayer potions and a little bit of food. The Barrows Brothers have a very low magic defense, so if you were to wear armor to Barrows, your best bet is to wear defensive melee armor. If you're not using the salamander, you should also bring a ranged weapon along with a magic weapon, where the ranged weapon is used to kill Aram, and the mage weapon is for all the other Barrows brothers. The Slayer Staff E or the Iban Staff is a great low level option, otherwise high levels can use the Trident of the Seas or the Trident of the Swamp. So the salamander was doing really well, and I wasn't even using any armor, so I wasn't getting any attack or strength bonuses while I was fighting them. Doing 12 runs an hour, that's an easy 1 mil per hour. At lower levels, you might expect a bit under 1 mil per hour, but with the combination of rune drops and things like the Aram's robe top or the Carol's leather top, you really can make a lot of money here. Doing at least the Mauritania Hard Diary also increases the loot that you get from Barrows. It doesn't increase your chance of getting an item, but it increases the amount of runes and other non-rare drops, which really add up to the total. I'm sure even the lower level Salamanders will work as well, but of course your trips will be a bit longer and you'll need a few more prayer pots and food. And the final boss of this video is Zora. Zora may look hard, but once you know how it works, it's actually one of the easiest safe bosses in the game. It has far lower requirements than Vorkarth, and you'll only need 80 magic and ranged and a decent defense level in order to kill him. Of course, you'll need the protection prayers as well. In order to get to Zora, you need to have started Regicide, and you can use a Fairy Ring plus an Agility Shortcut to get here, but I would recommend using the Zalandra Teleports, but only once you know you'll have a guaranteed kill at Zora. My whole 
gear setup right now is about 2 mil. My Trident's only about 100k because I only charged it with 200 charges and the rest of my gear isn't worth that much at all. So you can do Zora with not a lot of money and make millions per hour. Elite Void works very well at Zora, but Void Mage is not all that good. You'd be better off taking Arams and Carols or Ancestral and Armadil, but for the sake of this, I'm showing it with Black Dehyde and Mystics. The best weapon to use at Zora is the Twisted Bow, but the Toxic Blowpipe or an Armadil or Dragon Crossbow will also work very well. The Trident of the Swamp is very recommended, but it can super easily be done with the Seas as well. You definitely will need an Anti-Venom and you'll also need Rings of Recoil. Now in the description, I've linked a picture which I'm using and I always use when I kill Zora. What this is, is the four different processes that Zora can take. By the third rotation, you'll know exactly which process it is, Alpha, Bravo, Charlie or Delta. And all you have to do is just kind of keep one ahead at all times. So always know where he's going to go next and what prayer you'll need. And then just check again once you've moved to the next place. On his ranged form, you need to pray range and use magic. And on his mage form, you pray mage and use range. He has a melee form as well where you do not need to use any prayers as long as you're standing in the safe areas and you should be using magic when he's on his melee form. Zora also has a ranged form that is similar to Jad. However, he always goes from range to mage, then range, then mage. So you always know what he's going to do next. When you get to the Jad form, watch his head and watch when it bobs down. Each time his head bobs down, you should switch to the opposite prayer to what he's using. You can see here, it's so easy to avoid all of the damage from his Jad phase just by watching his head and flicking prayers each time. At a lower combat level, it's possible to get over 2 mil per hour at Zora. And at higher levels, if you're getting 2 minute kills, you can get up to 4 mil an hour. Currently, the blowpipe is almost 6 mil, which is one of the key things that's making Zora so profitable right now. Throughout the fight, you should always be aware of your ring of recoil and when it breaks, because once it breaks, you'll take a lot of damage from the little snakelings that are around. They only have one health each, but they can can hit very high. So once your ring of recoil breaks, make sure you put on your other one straight away. As you do more and more Zora, you can gradually upgrade your gear as you go, with each upgrade speeding up your kills by a little bit. So that is four easy bosses in old school that you can make huge amounts of profit from. The requirements aren't too high for many of these bosses, but if you're only just starting out, I'd highly suggest starting off with Barrows and getting a feel of switching prayers there so you're a bit more prepared for some of the higher level bosses. Rex is a great boss to do when you're on a Dagonoth Slayer task for a lot of profit because with the 1 in 128 drop rate of a Berserker Ring, you're almost guaranteed a Berserker Ring on one Slayer task. The Vetion flinching method or the Vetion safe spot method method is very good for low levels and if you want to learn the safe spot I've put a link to my video in the description below and of course Zora is a little bit harder than the other ones here but once you get the rotations and the mechanics of Zora fully down it really does turn into a profit snake. If you'd like to see some more old school runescape videos in your sub box be sure to subscribe. Leave a like if you learned something. Anyways thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.